On F120 FE, there are many settings that you can use to optimize your gameplay, which can be quite overwhelming to get your head around, but I'm gonna be running you through my tips and tricks as to how I would go through setting up your in-game settings, along with how you would set up your Fanatec wheel and pedals. Starting with everyone's favorite, we have the setup of the car. Now, first of all, we have five different presets that if you're just a casual player and want to just jump in and pick a setup for a certain track, you have a variety of downforce levels available to you. So if you're doing some open lobbies and you need a quick setup, pick the setup that you think will work best for that track. If it's high speed, high downforce, pick a max downforce or an increased downforce setup. If it's Monza, probably want a bit less downforce, pick what is right for the track. If you're like me and like to make your own custom setups to get the best performance out of the car, I'm gonna break that down now. On the aerodynamics, we have values of zero to 50 on the front and rear wing, and you can adjust these fully independently on both the front and rear wing to your own preference and to also what suits the track. So if you're at a track like Monaco, you're gonna need as much downforce as you can plan onto the car. If you're at a track like Monza, you're gonna have to get that wing off as, you know, as much as you can basically take it as long as you can take the corners. You really need to focus on the top speed around tracks like that. And, but also gives you options to customize it to your own preference. Do you like a stable car? You can increase the rear wing, decrease the front wing, give yourself a very stable aero platform. But if you're maybe a little bit more like me and like a good front end aerodynamically, you can go quite aggressive on the front wing and give yourself quite a positive car on the nose, which gives really good initial turn in and reaction on the front end during cornering. Differential, you can adjust on and off the throttle. Off throttle and on throttle have historically in recent years been run quite open. So off throttle, you can basically control how much rotation you have when you're off the power. So 50% is the most rotation, 100% is the most stable. And typically speaking, you can run this very, very open, even down at 50%. However, do not run it at 50% if you feel it is too hard to drive, it's costing you time and is costing your consistency. Don't be afraid to increase it to whatever value you feel comfortable. But generally speaking, you can run this value pretty open. On the throttle is a very similar story. You can run the, the, the differential a bit, a bit more locked if you have heavy, heavy traction zones. For example, first section of Bahrain or the first chicanes of Monza, you can run the differential maybe 60, 65%. But if you've got a very, very high speed section where you really need rotation while on heavy power, you want to open up the differential a little bit more. So down to the likes of 55 and in some extreme cases, maybe even 50. But you need to be careful as the lower you go, the more wheel spin you're actually going to generate on the inside tire of that corner. Might sound complicated, I know differentials are quite tricky, but just watch out for these things when you're modifying them. Suspension geometry, we have the camber and the toe, front and rear axle, and this is basically adjusting, as it says, camber values and toe angles. Camber can be useful to adjust when you're, you know, having to really lean on the car very aggressively and you're maybe running out of grip. So if you're, you know, at a very high load circuit, whether that be Spain or Silverstone, and you're leaning on the car hard and it's just not giving you that grip, maybe you want to increase the camber just a little bit more just to maybe get a little bit more purchase out of the tire when under heavy loading. That's typically how it seems to work on the Formula One game. Tow values are typically in F1 run quite low, but do not be afraid to play about with them as they are a very useful setting to play about for individual preference. If you want a bit more reaction on the nose, you can increase your front toe. And the same for the rear. If you want a little bit more natural turning on the rear, you can increase the rear toe values, which are actually quite adjustable to the single point 0-1 of a degree on the game, so it's very, very customizable. Don't be afraid to experiment, that's definitely something that I would always advise when making setups. Keep an open mind, do not, you know, think, oh, that'll never work, because you would be amazed at the things that can work on the F1 game. And in general, when making setups, you'll never know until you've tried it. Suspension is very, very different this year. We have a wide variety of customizable options on the front and rear suspension as the values are now 1 to 41, up from 1 to 11 in the previous year's game, which means you can get even more fine tuning on the stiffness and softness of your suspension. Front suspension on many F120 setups, especially in presets as well, are run quite stiff. That's just to keep the grip under high load situations, especially at high speed. Softer settings can be quite useful around tracks that maybe require a a bit more low speed 
um, grip where it helps bring the mechanical grip out of the tire, as if the car is too stiff at low speed, you're just gonna scrub the tire, the tire's not gonna bite into the tarmac. So this is a useful adjustable setting, but also track dependent, you know? Think about how many corners are high speed and low speed at tracks on this game. But generally speaking, you can run quite stiff on the front at the moment in this game. Rear suspension, you can also get quite stiff, but this is also a little bit preferential. You can make the car extremely stable by making the rear suspension a bit soft, where basically the front axle is the one that's doing all the heavy turning at high speed, whereas the rear axle will sort of just take a little bit of a a little bit of a breather at high speed, but then picks up the mechanical grip at low speed. Alternatively, you can bring that rear suspension back up, also track dependent if you've got a lot of high speed corners, but got to make sure that you keep constant traction as well. If you go too high on the rear, it can become very easy to just suddenly break grip on the rear, and that makes things very, very difficult, especially around traction dependent and rear limited circuits. So something to keep an eye out on, and maybe just play around with. It's also preferential. Maybe you like a car that's very reactive on the rear, you won't know until you've tried it. Roll bar is actually quite a useful setting and it's very important to actually get fine tuned to perfection as if you go too stiff on the front roll, especially through certain high speed corners, the front tires or the rear tires for that matter, won't actually be able to lean on the tire hard enough. We were talking about camber earlier on about how the tire needs to be leaned on hard and maybe isn't giving enough grip. Well, the roll bar can actually restrict you from leaning on the tire in the first place. So this is something that, especially around high speed circuits, that you might want to actually have a little play around with to make sure that you're not losing grip that is right there for the taking because you're running too stiff on the roll bar. That goes to the front and the rear. Find the balance that works for you, whether you like a stiff rear roll bar where the car's really reactive, really nippy and responsive, or you like it quite lazy, predictable, gives you a confident balance. Try out what you like. Ride height has changed quite a lot this year as well. We have a lot of different components as well. We can change it between 30 and 50. We can also run quite a positive rake angle as per the preset setups, but it is also customizable. You can change, first of all, the overall ride height of the car, so you can run it a bit lower, depending on how smooth a certain track is, whether you need to take a lot of curves, or if you just want to have the car really low to the ground to generate the type of balance and movement you like of the car. Alternatively, round tracks where there are a lot more curbing, this gives you the option to raise the car up, give you a little bit more ground clearance to make sure that you are not, you know, clipping very, very heavy curbings around especially street tracks, which historically and typically have a lot of curbs that are used quite often and are quite demanding and lap time critical around the lap on one lap pace and in you know, also for tyre wear as well. If you hit a kerb in the wrong way and you start sliding on the exit, you're gonna destroy your tyres, so it's also a balancing act. You can also adjust the rake angle of the car, which is basically the difference between the front and rear ride height, which can help stabilise the rear or, you know, give yourself a little bit more on the nose um, behaviour or help the rear really start rotating as well. You can go both ways, you can make the front higher than the rear, you know, get the rear to rotate quite a bit but have maybe a little bit more of a lazy front or you can get the car really on the nose, get that aero right on the nose and um, yeah, pivot really a lot more on the front axle. There's a lot of customizable options and a lot of this is also preference as well so be sure to play around with this setting. Braking is a little bit more simple. Brake pressure we typically run at 100% at all times, however there are probably a few unique situations where you would be able to bring that brake pressure back a little bit just to optimize your braking across the course of maybe a few different conditions setup types it's really really unique but generally speaking if you run at 100 percent you should be okay but if you are locking up constantly no matter your brake bias and you're on 100 percent brake pressure maybe reel it back a few percent just to give yourself a little bit of margin. You will lose some braking performance, but you might gain consistency, which depending on your skill level can help you out in the meantime. Brake bias, you can run in a variety of different ways and is very changeable corner to corner. In very heavy braking zones, you can run the car quite far forward on the front brake bias, as long as you're not you know, pinching the front on the initial turn in. But typically speaking, if you have a straight line heavy braking zone, you can run really far forward and it'll yeah, give you good solid braking performance and means the rear is in check for that initial turn in. Alternatively speaking, you can also create rotation by bringing the brake bias backwards a little bit, but equally it can be a very delicate balance. If you go just that little click too far, even if it's 1%, 2%, it can maybe even be the same percent that you used the lap before. If you brake just that little bit too hard and at the wrong moment, it can actually spin you out if you're not too careful, especially if you slam on the brakes at 50% brake bias, you'll very quickly find yourself facing backwards. So be sure to 
build up your knowledge and play around with the brake bias. It is a really useful tool to maximizing your lap time across a variety of different circuit types. Tire pressures are incredibly customizable and I would advise changing these also to help the tire temperatures as if you go higher you're going to generate more tire temperature so if you are not generating enough temperature during the lap you can increase the tire pressure and give yourself a little bit more temp to play with but equally if you are overheating a lot you can bring the pressures down considerably as well you can also use the pressure to help try and generate a little bit more grip from that tyre in certain situations as well. So if you want a little bit more positive front or a bit more stable rear, you can play around with the pressure a little bit. There are different characteristics, so you know, having a little bit higher on the front or higher on the rear, but generally speaking, you can use, use this as a balancing tool to help the temperatures out. Now we're gonna take a look at our Fanatec wheel and pedal configuration, along with a couple of settings that will help you out along the way. Starting off, we have our wheelbase. This is a Fanatec DD2 wheelbase, which produces up to 25 newton meters of torque. And we also have the Club Sport version 2.5 steering wheel with the advanced paddle module. As you can see, we have the magnetic upshift and downshift paddle alongside with some top paddles as well, which you can map to whatever you like along with a dual hand clutch on the bottom as well, which you can actually also set the bite point on for relevant games. Pedals, we have the Club Sport V3s where we have a clutch, a load cell brake, and a throttle of which all are very customizable. And the brake pedal as well can be adjusted in stiffness so that you can you know, determine the travel, how hard the pedal is to press. And you can also adjust the brake force, which is the total force it takes to reach 100% brake pressure on uh, the game on the steering wheel while you drive so if you want to make the brake a little bit harder to press and you want to fine tune it you can increase your brake force that just a little bit to make that brake a little bit more um, long and travel give you a little bit more modulation and maybe stop you locking up as much on the steering there are a few key settings that you mainly want to look at you have first of all let's talk about the big one the force feedback strength this is basically your overall strength of the force feedback that you are going to have for me personally I quite like a strong force feedback so I'll have the setting turned quite high depending on the game and the mode some people like it a bit lighter it is completely down to preference and is completely tunable to your own liking with value zero to 100 and the force feedback strength. Wheel sensitivity is another huge one that is often adjusted on the Formula One game. The native rotation on the game is 360 degrees, which is 180 each way. A lot of people actually like to make this a little bit more sharp so that they're able to catch the car a little bit easier and be a bit more aggressive with their initial input. So for example, in the past I've run 310 and also 290 degree rotation, which makes the car a lot sharper on that initial input. It means that you're able to catch bigger snaps, bigger input, put a lot quicker it means you can maybe hustle the car a little bit more to maybe the downside where you're just aren't able to maybe have minor minute very small adjustments but it's a it's a pros and cons it's down to preference force feedback style you know like if you run a smaller wheel rotation maybe you want the force feedback to be stronger maybe if you run it higher you can maybe have it a little bit weaker it is completely customizable to your own liking there are also a variety of other tunable settings within the Fanatec software that can adjust things such as force spring settings damping inertia friction it is fully customizable and you can really understand you know what you like what you don't like and um, yeah, get the ultimate force feedback setup and just gaming wheel setup as a whole for you. If you guys have got any more setup questions about F123, please leave them down below in the comments.